just getting there. Making sure I'm live, whatever. Uh, right, so I sorted the switch out. I perfected it. I've even got <clears throat> end stops for the switch. Uh, well, it's not a switch. Well, yeah, this is a switch. It's uh, um, for my um, delay line, <coughs> delay line coil, which is on my circuit board. So I'll just run over it in briefly now. I've got everything right now, and I've even got it so that in most it, the connections don't break in between the uh, sections. Now, what I've basically done is I've put some solder blobs on the pads to raise them up a little bit. You can just see them there. Um, by raising the pads slightly proud, it makes sure that the contactor, which is rotating, <coughs> maintains contact with the, all of them because it's not a normal switch where you send power through a line and then you want to deselect that and send it through another line. This is a, a delay line, which means that they can be over two points at the same time. So this is another reason why I didn't buy a switch, <coughs> because this needs to be permanently in contact all the time because it's moving through different uh, coil sections and it doesn't matter if you short two sections together momentarily while you're moving through the sections because that will also give me um, uh, affect the delay line anyway so let's just pop it into my caddy thingy hopefully it won't fall out and I'll try and show you it working now at the moment we're on 0.8 of an ohm so if the clips don't fall off the board we should be all right and it's a bit tricky to do without knocking the clips off because i haven't sold any wires on yet <coughs> right so uh let's get the make sure this meter set right because they can see properly um right Hopefully it's going to work because I'm looking at the delay on the on the YouTube thing. Uh, it's still not set right now. If I get the light angle right, you should be able to see it better now. Now, as I move the the switch, we should you know what it should be continuous, but we should see a difference. It should go between about 0.8 of an ohm to 1.1 or 1.2, depending on the position of the switch. just went to 1.1 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. still on 1.2 because we're in the middle of the coil at the moment it might not show a difference on the meter, but there will be a difference because we're adding more copper tracks, you see, as we're moving along. <coughs> It'll show up more when I'm using, the, using it on my device, my generator uh, device. When I connect, put the capacitors on this board and I start running some tests, we should see a big difference just by moving it from one section to the next. Right, so... 1.1, because we're on the other side of the coil, because this... <clears throat> it's not logarithmic or, li or linear or anything like that because what happens is the middle of the coil is a higher resistance than the outer ones. So the outer one on this, <clears throat> let me just point. So this coil over here, this edge of the coil here, might actually have a resistance of 0.7. The edge of the coil on this side might have a resistance of 0.8. So we have to basically scale all the way around to actually get to the other side really it's it's just the way the coil is is wrapped uh, i did disturb it a bit then i must have been in between two tracks now let's just rotate now we're on one arm rotate. it's very stiff actually which is good i want it to be stiff now we're on point eight now we're on point seven i'm on my end stop right now point six <clears throat> right so <clears throat> it works so if i go all the way to this edge if i go all the way from this edge of the coil 
all the way down to this one, it should be something like 0.7 or something. Right, so let's go right down. There we go, 0 0.7, because it's the other side of the coil. So that's 0.7 on this edge. Go up a bit, 0 0.9, 1.1. If I bend the board, it intermittently breaks the connection because I'm, I'm pressing, and the leads are, oops, the leads are coming off as well. So we'll get some intermittent reactions because of these leads. The switch is very tight, so it shouldn't be a problem. But as you can see, it works. It's these leads that are... Oh. That's what the intermittent part is. The switch is working great. It's just these frigging leads. I'm trying to hold them apart a bit. So the cop contact ah stay on it's so tight yeah it works yay oh I'll tell you what I did. I had um, I had a bit of an issue with the the screw that goes all the way through to when I tightened it up. The screw kept unraveling, undoing, and the nut on the other side kept on coming loose. Well, I figured this is permanent, really. I don't want to be taking this apart anyway. <clears throat> so what I did was I got my center punch and I put the nut, the, the bolt on that side on against my pliers and then I used the hammer and a hammer and a punch and I punched the bolt tight to basically rivet it into position so that it won't come off. I can get it off if I want to, if I just file it down with my, with my diamond file and then I'll be able to, able to unscrew it but I really don't want to be unscrewing it because it'll if if it's able to be unscrewed it will keep coming apart on me when I'm using it because all the torque basically is transferred through the <coughs> center core of the bolt and into the nut and it would keep unraveling and I can't use anything else to hold it so I thought well bugger it I'm just gonna center punch it which is what I did um, because I raised the um, and because I can get to those little pads underneath just by rotating the switch all the way around basically like this way I can get to most of those pads to put solder blobs on if you if you look you'll notice that um, most of the pads are exposed when I move it around so I can easily put more solder on without dismantling it so the solder basically raises the pads up enough that I don't have any sagging where the contactor isn't in contact with the metal because the fiberglass, if the, if the copper was wearing away slowly and it was getting too thin and it wasn't making good contact, whereas now it, it works really well. Uh, I've disconnected it so you won't see it. You won't hear anything right now, but trust me, it's working. <laughs> anyway, let's connect it and you'll see if it's still working. There you go. Oops. These flipping leads. So anyway, the next stage is to get some wires soldered onto this. And get the capacitors soldered on. It's it's actually 1.1. Oops. Anyway, so I've got to put the capacitors on the board. Uh, mount those on. I've soldered these two, the resistor and the trimmer on. I've actually preset this trimmer to 1 ohm. Which is about what I want it really. Um, I could probably adjust it to 10 ohms, but it, it's a 100 ohm preset and you can't get them anymore. This is a really old, it's a very good quality one actually. It was made by, it's by Radio Spurs. Um, they're very hard to get hold of, 100 ohm trimmers. Um, they were mostly using TVs, you see, years ago. We used to have a lot of low value resistors on some TVs and they were mostly used for those. 
I don't suppose there's much of a use for them these days. Low values. I mean, every my, just the minimum you can get on eBay is about 10k or 1k. I think it's 1k the minimum. You can't get anything lower than that. I've looked. Oh, maybe you might better get a 500 ohm one. But trying to get a 10 ohm. Ugh, good luck with that. Yeah, even this, even I couldn't find a 10 ohm in my box of uh, resistors. I, all I could find was a 100 ohm trimmer. And uh, they're just very rare. Hmm. So, yeah, because this is, this is really a passive circuit, that's, that means it's not active. There's no semiconductors on here. Uh, unless I put some LEDs on there, which I was thinking about doing, but I don't know. I'll just use this bypass, bypass resistor for now. And um, I could put some pass it, some LEDs on there just it just in, if the current exceeds where it goes through 3.3 ohms, it might trigger the LEDs. I don't know. It, I don't think it will though. Um, but I just left the option where I could put LEDs on there if I wanted to test it with LEDs. But it is a passive circuit, and they would LEDs would introduce more loss anyway. If I wanted those to work, it would int introduce more loss to the circuit, and it would interfere with the delay line. So I've just basically left those out because that resistor is in parallel. I mean, the LEDs would be in parallel with the resistor instead of in series. So uh, they really don't need to be in there. I mean, when I've got this thing working, I could put my scope across these and see if there's enough voltage to drive an LED. Um, but because it's AC, there will be two LEDs um, connected inversely, so one, so that one flickers on one half cycle, the other flickers on the other half cycle. But yeah. Um, so anyway, my switch is great. I'm happy. I'm happy with it. It works, and obviously I've got another board which I could make later on for a second set of coils and everything, and I could make an, another one. Oh, I'll make sure I dab some solder on those pads though before I assemble the next one because it makes it made life so much easier having them raised a bit. Um, solder having connections between um, solder blobs and the contactor is not the ideal situation because you can get um, problems with connectivity. But it's a test circuit anyway. It's really for exploring the best delay. Uh, obviously, what I can do is, <clears throat> when I find the optimum setting on the delay line, and I have my switch in a, posi a certain position, and it works well on my generator, then I can simply measure across that coil to find the inductance. And when I find the inductance, I can wind a, a specific coil to match that inductance, and I won't need all this stuff, really. Um, it's it's really about finding the optimum inductance because it's hard to tell this this stuff's flying around so fast uh, 6000 rpm oh, uh, it's just we're talking about microseconds of delay and everything and it's it's um, yeah so I mean it's just very very hard to, to find the optimum coil value for this without <laughs> <clears throat> a little bit of experimentation, exploration, using something like this, really. Anyway, um, that's that. Um, <clears throat> actually, I think I better turn the camera off now. <laughs> uh, get it out of here. Uh, come out of here. Can't get it out. Come out. It's stuck. Come on. Uh, it usually comes out. Uh, come on. I'll show you. Okay, right. So, <clears throat> a little close up. Uh, if I can get it to focus, I'll put some little dots to give me a little guide. I did re I 3D printed this new one, by the way. The one I did in the previous video wasn't very perfect it wasn't perfectly aligned and what I did um, it's glued I've glued the nut on the back so it doesn't move around and the contactors basically yeah you can kind of see it the side of it down here <coughs> so what I did was I printed two more and I'll show you the designs these are these are the other two 
if I can get them, get them off the printer bed. Um, hang on a minute. All right, I'll show you what I did before I end the stream. The contactor sits in this little groove. Come on, focus. So there's a little groove there, here, where my fingernail is pointing. And there's a little nub sticking up on the edge there. And you see that little nub, a raised bump. And the the what the con contactor goes over the top of that bump, and that bump gives a little bit of pressure to the contactor against the board. And to keep this thing balanced so that it doesn't basically bend in a specific direction, so it doesn't tilt this way, I have a raised ring on the back edge there. Um, I don't know if you can see it. It's point. It's very thin. It's point point four millimeters. Ah, focus, focus. Right, there's a ring. You might not be able to see very well because it's so small, but it's about the same height. Uh, on the back edge, at the opposite side of this nub. So th there's that. Uh, I'm gonna let me put it on the table. It might work better. Right. Right. So let's get this focus in. Point with my knife. Right. So. Right, there is, oh, where am I, there is the, the little raised edge just there, and there's a ring that goes around between here and around here, and this back edge is what, this is what counterbalances it to keep that edge, so that when I rotate this, when this turns, right, when it rotates, this edge, this ring here is pressing equally on the back edge so that it keeps that at the same height so that it doesn't wobble and tilt if you get the idea if you get the light right on it you should see it better but it's hard to, it's difficult to see yeah very very difficult but that's just the, that's just the knob this one is just the knob that you turn with your hand so it's nothing special you know, the the back the the other side is just flat, so there's nothing to show on the other side. It's just completely flat. But it's this edge where the contactor sits. It's the important part, really. And it's so tiny. It would work if I drew a line on it with my pen, so you could see that that little ring. But you might have to see. I don't know. Oh, actually, if I get, get some of, just a minute, if I get some of the light on it. If I shine a light, now you can see it, that's better. You can see it now, look, when I shine the light cross sideways, you can see that little edge. It won't clean up, actually, it's just come off the printer bed, so it's a little bit rough, but you see that ring. Um, what's it focusing at? Come on, focus. Anyway, you get the idea. Okay, anyway, that's it for now. <sighs>